Hola amigos, ¿cómo están? Bienvenidos a otro episodio de Tech 23. Aquí se habla de tech y cultura. Today we're diving into e-discovery. That's legal tech if you've ever heard the term. Our guest is Gloria Cabrera. She's working at a billion dollar company imagining huge projects. We're going to take a deep dive into learning what does e-discovery mean? What does legal tech mean? Pero también vamos a explorar esta banderita que está atrás de mí, la de Guatemala. Como miran, ahí está el quetzal, un pájaro muy bonito. Nos vamos a explicar, Gloria, un poquito más de la cultura, la comida y pues qué es ser un chapín, qué es ser una chapina, como dicen ustedes allá. Vamos a ir a conocerla. Estoy muy emocionada del tema que vamos a hablar y de hablar de mi cultura y bien lista. No, Mucho gusto. Yo, yo gracias más, por, yo más. Gracias por la oportunidad. Sí, sí, sí. Y for me, like, your industry was something like new to me. I think I maybe had heard the term before, pero pues nada que ver, no sabía, no sabía exactamente de qué se trataba and even um, how deep it went and like the impact that it has on tech. And a lot of it is like stuff you don't normally hear about, it kind of stays no, behind the don't. scenes. Yeah, it's uh, a lot maybe of as it should, right? Just empezar. Quiero que pues te tomes un minuto a ver dónde estamos ahorita, sí. los olores, los sonidos que están pasando, qué sientes, qué memorias salen de este lugar. No, muchas memorias. Uh, el estar lejos de nuestra de nuestros países, de nuestra cultura y cuando hay restaurantes así que te llevan con la comida, los olores, no sé si escuchas la marimba, <risa> es como que te llevas a tu niñez, a, te, a tu cultura, a tu país, a, y tu, la marimba familia, es el, a tu familia, el, sí, es una marimba, sí. es una música típica de Guatemala, vas a comer a los restaurantes, se la están tocando y, y, y me recuerda mucho a mi abuelita. ¿Do you know how to play marimba? No, yo no sé. No, ¿Did no. you ever learn? No, no, no. <risa> de música sí que no te sé, las, me encanta, pero de tocarla no, pero la marimba, mi mamá, mi abuelita se levantaba en las mañanas a Uh, con la marimba. No, no, no a tocarla, no, con, la, con el sonido ahí, <laughs> sí, hacer sí, los sí. quehaceres de la casa, okay. a lavar la ropa. Entonces me trae muchos recuerdos, la uh -huh. marimba y la comida. No, me encanta <laughs> poder comer esta comida aquí. Es un país muy colorido, uh, existe mucho todavía la cultura maya, como el quiché, es un lugar, hay diferentes lenguajes, diferentes uh -huh. lenguas indígenas. So, ¿Qué significa el quiché? I have not been to el quiché, Está, yo soy como más de la capital, pero uh -huh. hay muchas personas del quiché que se vienen a la capital a trabajar y traen sus negocios, traen todas tus artesanías, existe mucho el bordado del huipil. Yo traigo un huipil, todo lo que usan es bien colorido. Y si miras, like, everything is embroidered, like, a mano. Yeah. Entonces, that probably took a long vas, time to make, sí, right? mucho, mucho. Es un trabajo a mano. Muchos lo hacen, hacen bolsas, hacen blusas, hacen diferentes cosas. Pues tenemos tanto talento en Latinoamérica, especialmente en nuestras culturas indígenas, y me da gusto que ya finalmente, well, well siempre ha sido fashion, right? Pero sí. ya está entrando como en otros, like, higher fashion uh, places. Que sé que muchas de estas comunidades, that's Eso like, viven. they depend 100%. Mm -hmm. they Even like during COVID, que bajo el turismo, they suffered, so... Sí, they hay que darle suffer. luz a todos los textiles, a, a toda la gente indígena, porque pues son, es, es, son las personas somos que hacen que nuestra somos, la cultura sí. más rica, yo creo, Exacto. como dices. Sí. Yeah. Bueno, quiero saber de cómo llegaste desde Guatemala a hacer like this badass Latina powerhouse in the Eat Discovery role. Pero antes de eso, porque I know it's going to be a good story, hay que ordenar una comida, ¿sí? No, sí, la bueno. comida. El desayuno es sí. mi comida favorita, okay. una de mis comidas favoritas. Entonces quiero ordenar un desayuno chapín. A ver, ok, desayuno especial chapín. Eso okay. lo vas a encontrar en todos lados. Incluye los huevos, frijoles negros, uh -huh. uh, plátanos dorados. Y también lo que me encantaba de niña son esos chuchitos. Chuchitos, ¿qué sí. son chuchitos? Y también los rellenitos. Los chuchitos son como unos tamalitos chiquitos. Uh -huh. like, they're like little tamales, like small tamales. Uh -huh. And they're filled with like cheese or they're filled with chicken. And then the rellenitos de plátanos son como unos plátanos fritos uh -huh. like, y con frijoles en... Frijoles, ricos. Y son frijoles dulces, entonces son como más dulces. Okay. So. ¿Están bueno. listos por ordenar? Sí. sí. Okay. Por favor, me das un um, especial chapín y también una orden de rellenitos. Okay. Y para mí también algo que ordenar, algo tradicional. Entonces, ¿qué me recomienda? Tenemos las tradicionales las tortillas con huevo y jamón, como el desayuno. Trae la tortilla, frijolitos, el jamón, el huevito estrellado, salsa y té. Sí, ese, okay. ese por favor. Uh -huh. Y de lo que ordenamos ahorita, how much of that do you make at home? Not a whole lot. Like, sí, sí, los frijoles negros, más cuando voy a la casa de mi mamá. Okay. 
mi mamá sí, ah, aquí te tengo unos frijoles negros, allá se come la tortilla de maíz, no sí. sé, no, yo vine aquí a conocer la tortilla de harina, ah, you sí. eat corn tortillas, yeah. so I do make the fried plantains, because you can eat fried plantains with breakfast, you mm -hmm. can eat them as a side for lunch, mm -hmm. like, de todo. <laughs> There's always fried plantains. Pues hablando de, de tu niñez y de tu mamá, can you start the story of telling us like cómo llegaste, de, de qué parte de Guatemala eres para los los otros chapines que nos están escuchando? Quizás sí. tienes unos países ahí cerquitas. I came here when I was 12. Okay. Mi mamá se vino de primero, era mamá soltera y se vino um, de inmigrante y luego yo vine aquí a los 12 años. No hablaba nada de inglés, mm -hmm. empecé en el sexto grado. So I started middle school okay. here. When And I, here in Houston or other parts? In Houston. Okay. In Houston. I've, I've, I've always been here in Houston. And then I went to high school. And then right when I was in high school in my senior year, I was interviewed for a legal file clerk summer oh, job right away. at a law firm. <laughs> okay. At a law firm. So it was downtown. So the, the law firm gave me the opportunity to go to school part-time mm -hmm. and work part-time. So it was great because I, I was able to like work with all the files. Mm -hmm. And this was back in the day when everybody would send letters, faxes. So the amount of paper, like most law firms had file rooms, mm -hmm. like file rooms for each case, file rooms for each attorney. Everything was paper, mm -hmm. everything was paper. So. I started my career as a file clerk right out of high school. Uh, from there, I moved into like the commercial litigation and became a paralegal. And it was still paper up to like the early 2000s. Okay. Um, you know, probably like mid. And then you started noticing people sending emails, mm -hmm. sending the court systems started doing electronic filing. Mm -hmm. um, you started noticing people doing more electronic archives, like, you know, los, los archivos, los, they will scan them and put mm -hmm. them in electronic format. Uh, so things change. Like, era como una parte de tu, de tu trabajo y estás viendo los cambios. Estás viendo que, oh, ya, ya casi nadie usa la fax machine. Existen Están todavía, por... ¿verdad? Hoy en día. Existen, pero miraste el cambio y la tra the transition Ajá. from... Oh, you know, you will get all this mail. Yeah. Like, they will have, like, a mail clerk just opening all the letters and open all the court filings. To file on a case to go to the courthouse, you will have these mail-outs of, like, <laughs> a hundred mail-outs. And it was just paper. It was just paper. So then... When's the last time you sent a fax? I don't remember. <laughs> it's been a long time. But you saw the transition of, okay, there's all this paper filing, clerical, and then you start seeing the transition mm. into more electronic data. And was that in the industry like an easy transition? Because I know some other industries, the moment things started turning text, you know some what? people were very hesitant about It was about slow. The move. It was slow. And I think for me, being in the field that I was with attorneys, mm -hmm. and these are old-fashioned attorneys, mm -hmm. they fought it for a long time. <laughs> they did. Nos mandaban un archivo electrónico, mm -hmm. lo teníamos que imprimir porque oh, ellos querían ver trees. el papel. <laughs> you know, ellos querían ver el papel y escribir y hacer notas en el papel. Yeah. Hay muchos todavía que es like, no, no, yeah. like, no. Eh, se les hace difícil la, trans, la, mm -hmm. you know, la transition yeah. from paper to mm -hmm. electronic. I think the adaptation of it, like, hay muchos que sí les tomó tiempo mm -hmm. y dependía de los rellenitos. Okay. So, ¿te gustan los plátanos fritos? Sí, me encantan. Ok, so Pero... esto... Esto se mira diferente. Es, es muy diferente. Son plátanos fritos, los cocen, luego lo hacen como una, un huevito o algo así. Aparte hacen los frijoles negros dulces. Es más dulce y luego le ponen azúcar y todo el, aquí arriba. Entonces, no, esto es una... ¿Ves? Ooh. Mira. Ooh. Es el plátano frito. A ver, we need to get a, 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 a camera zoom in for this one. So you can just kind of... I just like that movie right there. Salió todo el sabor. Sí. <laughs> Primera, ¿cómo se llama? Rellenitos. Rellenitos. Sí, los tienes que probar. Mm -hmm. mm. It's good, right? Sweet, salty, crunchy, and soft all at the same time. And you guys gotta try this. En las tardes me decían, vamos a traer unos rellenitos, vamos a traer unos rellenitos. Para alguien que no sabe nada de, de esta industria, ¿cómo le explicas? Like, si alguien te dice, okay, Gloria, this sounds awesome. Like, um, what, what do you do? Can you give us kind of like an easy to understand step by step of this is e-discovery? Okay, so the e-discovery process, like in a case, it's 
exchanging information. Okay. Exchanging information. So you get sued, like, tú tienes una compañía, mm -hmm. yo tengo una compañía, sí. yo te voy a demandar. We have mm -hmm. like a multi-million dollar contract. <gasps> we voy a demandar. Okay. <laughs> Ponte listo. Right? We, just got, we just met each other. Te demando, pones la petición en la corte. Ahora necesito tus documentos. You know, I need your documents. Sí. You need my documents. And that, that's, the, that's the discovery process. But now with so much ESI, mm -hmm. electronic store information. Ele okay. With so much ESI, now it's e-discovery with the E, mm -hmm. right? Electronic mm -hmm. discovery. So yo te voy a decir, okay, Jose, para el caso que teníamos, you know, I need your emails for 20 employees like let's i'm just gonna say 20 there's cases that have hundreds okay y para agregarle esa zona al, al, al example hay que decir que mi compañía hace crema y saque un nuevo producto una nueva crema but it's really crema guatemalteca but i'm branding it as a new mexican crema sí, y okay. te estás robando sí. mi crema, okay <laughs> so you have like 20 employees tienes químicos que hacen toda esa información mm -hmm. you're dealing with employees in latin america so you have mm -hmm. whatsapp messages okay ah. you have whatsapp messages <laughs> what? <laughs> and your mobile and stuff. So then, is your obligation to defend your case, mm -hmm. the, the, to be yeah. truthful and to be honest? Mm -hmm. And okay, I'm going to put all my employees in notice. I'm not going to delete any data. Yeah. Many companies do get in trouble for not following the preservation process. Luego is the collection process okay. to collect it, you know, to collect all the emails from your employees, PSTs, mobile devices. Like, toda esa información la tienes que colectar. Mm -hmm. All of this needs to be done under the guidance of your legal team. Mm. Because later, they, they're going to have to, you sí. know, you have Just to make it defensible. To stand in a court of law. You have to yeah. make it defensible. So, okay, te pido correos electrónicos mm -hmm. de tus... Y tus empleados mandan montón sí. de correos. You're going to collect, like, let's just say, 100 gigabytes of data. 100 gigabytes of data can turn into... Yeah, especially emails when Hundreds text, of thousands of emails, yeah. right? Hundreds of thousands of emails. And then on top of that, you have, like, a, you know, SharePoint database mm. with everything. Okay, mm -hmm. we have to collect the SharePoint database. And then you have some employees that do not just use your company email. Oh, they use Gmail. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we need to go and collect their Google. Oh, yeah, yeah, go la comida. Uh, no, no, más plátanos, gracias. Perdón. Muchas gracias. Para servirles. Esto es desayuno al muer y almuerzo. <laughs> Uy, no, qué rico. O comiendo y hablando. Multitasking. Sí, It's part sí, of being sí. an e-discovery manager. You can eat, you can talk. So back at it, right? You're collecting your data. You So now you have PSTs. You know, you have um, databases. You have mobile devices. Y todo eso es para que tú puedas defender sí. el caso. You have it all and you need to process it. Hay sistemas donde las vas a procesar and you're just extracting all the information mm. from the documents. You can extract up to like a hundred metadata fields from, from a file, you know, like you... Like y para los mucho, que no saben, ¿qué es, ¿qué es metadata? Metadata fields es toda la información de un mm -hmm. documento, like when it was sent, mm -hmm. when it was last printed, mm -hmm. um, when it was moved, um, when the text messages was received, mm -hmm. quién lo abrió, um, tanta información, like, it's a long list y of fields. Ayúdame a entender también, during the collection part of this, because I'm, I'm curious about this. Hey, I have to talk to my company. Hey, amigos, um, we're getting sued. <laughs> creo que Por se, la crema. Creo que se dieron cuenta. <laughs> que estamos robando la crema. <laughs> Los secretos. No sé. Now, I mean, la idea es de que mis empleados, en el momento que les digo that we're getting sued, they can no longer alter their devices, like they delete can, or right. anything legally, right? Um, but, Obviously, this industry exists because people don't follow don't those follow. rules. So they start deleting stuff, quizás, uh, emails. Um, this is when you guys take the devices. Do you take the information? Do you do we download an app to the device that gives you access to it? There's different tools. Okay. There's different tools collect, which to collect. And it just depends where your data sits, sí. right? If it's in the iCloud, it could be like a remote collection. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, if you have someone that has everything on a laptop, mm -hmm. they can image their laptop. So the uh, forensic expert can come. They can image image the laptop, mm -hmm. take a copy, and then they can continue using so it. So it just depends how your data is stored. Got it. An actual person from eDiscovery essentially comes like to my a, office like next, and right. says, okay, I need a, I need access to all the things, and then, okay, now I have it. We're moving forward. Yes. 
Yes, Jeez. like there's different ways to do it, right? Like, the, es que todo depende del caso. Like, sí, qué sí, clase sí. de caso es. Yeah. Okay, en esta clase de caso, tú no tienes, like, an IT department that can do mm -hmm. this type of stuff. So, you're going to hire someone like Concilio. We provide the service from beginning to end. De preservación y colección hasta el final. Te van a entrevistar. Okay, José, ¿qué clase de sistemas tienes? What are we looking at? Okay, tienes 20, 20 laptops that we need to mm -hmm. image. Okay, we need to set up at your company para agarrarlas. Ok, tienes 10 mobile devices, vamos a agarrarlos, so we're going to get the image of it. Y luego ya se llevan toda la data. Y ya que la tienen, la procesan. They're going to process all that data to extract it and to make it searchable. Sí. So a mental note, if you're using a corporate device, uh, make sure to keep it only work-related and not other stuff. It, because it, one day that's, that's somebody like, could... Si me miras a mí, I have three, three uh -huh. cell phones. I have my personal cell phone, mm -hmm. I have two company cell phones. And it's for the same reason. It's always good to keep those things separate yeah. if possible. Hay muchas veces que no puedes. And once it's processed, you can separate like the personal... Mm -hmm information at the time of collection they can say hey you know this is a personal folder don't collect that folder you know this is personal pictures don't collect those pictures mm -hmm. but again it just all depends on the type of case no quiero que se nos enfríe la comida entonces uh... <laughs> Todo muy rico, buen sazón, buen sabor. Buen sabor, y pues, Now I really want to go to Guatemala and actually try to. it like firsthand. Todos tienen que ir a Guatemala. Yeah, me imagino tienen como placitas también, right? And you oh, can no, like the street place. food is probably delicious. Oh, yes. Street What food is the best. What is your favorite best. street food? Rellenitos, tostadas, ah, okay. chuchitos, tamales. Oh, choco bananos. Okay. That's another of my great snacks, los choco bananos. Las paletas. Las chispas, no, no. Todos estos son los, like, the chips de allá. Las tortillas, los tortrix. <laughs> Does Guatemala have some, like, interesting foods that other people are probably like, oh, I can't believe y'all eat that? Ay, como que ustedes se comen los crickets? Yeah. Okay. Los sazonan como con chile y Así, con todo. ¿sabes que En Guatemala sí hay una season que se llaman son popos. Son, son popos. popos. Y son como unas hormigas así grandes uh -huh. y les arrancan el like the little butt uh -huh. and they fry it okay y es como una like like un treat like comértelo son popos son popos <laughs> google it please okay i'll have to i'll have to review <laughs> some popos okay bueno atrás entonces este career so you explain to us like the importance of for some of these companies okay. si nos estamos demandando o tú me estás demandando que te robe la receta de la crema um, and all the data that has to be collected how it's collected all the different people involved in collecting that data si después que es lo que sigue okay so then you extract information from the documents to make Make it searchable to analyze it. Entonces, once the data is processed, you're able to apply search terms. You're able mm. to call it down because if si tienes like data de 20 empleados, you may have mm. millions of documents, hundreds of thousands of dollars of documents, but many of them, the majority of them, are not going to be relevant. So. En el proceso de processing, you're extracting a lot of metadata information in order for you to analyze it. I only need information for this period of time, de este mes a este mes. You can apply key terms, like search terms. You can apply names. So you're culling it down. La estás tratando de hacer cien mil documentos and try sí. something more manageable, como, more en, relevant. En mi caso, like, a key term would be kind of maybe Guatemala or Chapine. Crema, yes, like, this, this. Guatemala, <laughs> crema, yeah. receta guatemalteca. Sí. Keywords, mm -hmm. okay? You you want it to make it manageable because you don't want to waste resources. Right. You don't want to waste money yeah. to have like all this data. Okay, so now you have a hundred thousand documents and I'm going to apply key terms. I'm going to apply a day filter. You know, I'm going to do like a communication analysis to identify the key documents. And then you get down to like oh, 20,000 documents that appear to be relevant to my lawsuit, to my case, to any investigation. Entonces, de esa información gets low it into a review platform one of the most popular and best mm -hmm. one is relativity okay so let's say you're going to load it to mm -hmm. relativity and then there you're able to see the documents like an image of an email or the mm -hmm. native email okay and the text associated mm -hmm. with that email. You have various views, but then on top of that, you're able to to see all the metadata fields. Mm -hmm. So you can build searches, you can build like queries just to get information. 
Do you, that's make, it's going to make it easier for the case for people mm -hmm. to search. To so that makes it. Sense. Now people are able to view the emails. Mm -hmm. They're able to view the Excel documents. They're able to mm -hmm. see the Word documents. Mm -hmm. In some cases, you want to put eyes on it, or in any in other cases, you want to use technology to complete see. that review. Yeah, because if it's like hundreds of documents, like yeah, that yeah. Makes sense. So, tal vez tienes información confidencial que es referente a tu queso mexicano, mm. que no quieres pasarle a una mm. compañía guatemalteca mm -hmm. información y recetas sí. de tu queso. So you're going to redact everything that's like uh, related to the queso, you mm -hmm. know? So you have to go through the documents like, okay, les voy a dar la información de la crema, pero no les voy a dar la información del sí. queso. So you have to like put eyes on it to review it and to like make sure that it's relevant. Mm -hmm. Y luego ya, oh, ¿sabes qué? De todos estos documentos que procesamos, now we have like 5,000 documents that are responsive, mm -hmm. they have been reviewed, they have been redacted, they have been tagged for privilege, you tag for confidentiality. Like, tal vez hay unos documentos que son bien confidenciales, que nada más le dices, this is for only the attorneys to see. Mm -hmm. So, todas esas tags y todo ese coding que le haces a sí. los documentos, luego ya lo pueden analizar y that's the documents you're going to produce to me. <laughs> So you've gone through yeah. the collection process, you've gone through the processing to the review, and now you're like, okay, Gloria, aquí están todos tus documentos de la crema, you know? <laughs> so bajamos de 100 mil a 20 mil, y luego mm -hmm. revisamos y los 5 mil. Y yo también te voy a dar a ti, sí. like, José, estos documentos son porque yo yeah. creo que tú estás sí. robándote mi crema, okay? Entonces ya con todos esos documentos... Encontré una foto de ti en Guatemala. <laughs> sí, tú estabas en Guatemala, comiéndote los frijoles yeah, con crema. Yeah, I guess your receipt for your flight. <laughs> Entonces... Los documentos que yo te doy, los documentos mm. que nosotros, that we exchange, yeah. those are the documents that are used during the lawsuit. Mm. Ese es el proceso de ahí, yeah. de ahí discover. And at that point, it just turned into like your traditional law. Well, thank you for explaining like the tech side to this. There's so <laughs> many opportunities in the tech side because there's so many things that go in the background. Mm -hmm. Concilio, like mi compañía, uh -huh. hace todos los procesos. We have teams that do like the collection, the processing, the, and then we have a mm -hmm. team that does like the hosting, like loading mm -hmm. into the database. Like, my job as a project manager is to manage the mm -hmm. process to be like in you know talking to the client yeah. and i think that's why like yo disfruto mi trabajo because i have like a higher level mm -hmm. uh, you know yo miro todas las sí. piezas like all the pieces put together mm -hmm. but there's so many great teams behind mm -hmm. me that they're the ones that are like collecting the data mm -hmm. processing the data we have a great like data analytics team, like they're like, mm -hmm. oh Gloria, you know, Juan estaba hablando con José <laughs> en esta fecha, estaban intercambi, they, uh -huh. they were exchanging recipes, and you know, you need to really talk, like you really need uh -huh. to pay attention to José's and Juan's documents, because they're really the ones. So you have like a data analytics team doing that, and then you have like many times the reviewers, the ones that are actually coding mm -hmm. documents, is like a, uh, like a team of attorneys mm -hmm. that are doing it. Um, you also have TAR, which is like a technology assistant mm -hmm. review. So, si tienes como 20 mil documentos and you're like, there's no way I can h hire like a team of attorneys to to review all those documents, right? Technology assistant review, you're gonna train the computer. This is like where a lot of that, a lot of this AI, like, sí. it's been used on, the, on our field for so long. Like, you're gonna train the computer to say, okay, this document's responsive, this document is not mm. responsive. You train the computer and the computer feeds you, like, okay, we analyze it y estos documentos son. Ahorita que estás hablando, dice, mira, tienes que poner atención a la conversación entre José y, y esta otra persona. Los que son como, I don't know the right term. Maybe a, a tech savvy chismoso. Sí. Sí. And they're like, no, mira, es que yo me fui al profile de aquí, and on this day I saw this picture on this, and they're actually really they're good. They're putting a yeah. puzzle together. And then they're like exactly. analyzing it and putting like, mira, María, por esta razón creo que your boyfriend's cheating on you because of like this, 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 and this. Or yes. even even like the guys too. It's like, dude, I think like I saw your girl over here and this and that, and then like they they present a case almost yeah. to they do. to it. So. Um, should people that are like digitally nosy inclined, and that should, have, is this like a... Yeah, it's a field that they can get into because they're analyzing mm -hmm. the data, they're putting like like a piece of the puzzle, like a story sí. together. So. Well, I want to take this moment to celebrate because a mí me dio mucho orgullo saber de que hay una latina en estas posiciones because you're I mean it's no easy task you're leading multi-million dollar cases some of the stuff she told me before the call that I can't share certain 
certain things about about uh, your work, and I and I respect that. And it's just really cool to know that, like, in your role, you're managing very like strong IP for certain companies, things that are affect our daily lives here in America, from some of the tech that we use to some of the uh, laws that are being passed, and being in a position where you can like sometimes even change like the industry, and, and on top of that, also managing all these different teams. So, um, is there something that because you're from Guatemala, because you're Latina, because you're a Latina mom, like has given you kind of like a, a superpower to be able to do your job so good? Like, do you say, oh, this, I can do this so well because I'm Latina, because I'm from Guatemala? I, sabes que, I think just the background and where we come from mm -hmm. and our work ethic, mm -hmm. you know, just like eso de, de nuestros papás que they, they don't, they didn't give up and mm -hmm. they tried to do the very best for us. I think that pushes us to go to the next level, sí. you know, that strong work ethic of si vas a hacer algo, lo vas a hacer bien, yeah. you know, and you're going to do the very best that you can. I think that's what has opened the door for me, mm -hmm. like in, in my career, the opportunity that have opened up for me have very much been for like la gente que, con la que trabajas sí. y la forma en la que trabajas y so I do think que eso me ha ayudado mucho like mi cultura latina y como son de trabajadores mm. y they just go above and beyond I love that your culture has opened doors but al mismo tiempo, I mean, the facts are that uh, Latinos, we make up just a very small percentage of the tech industry. We're growing, uh, populations, it's, it's doing a good job, but how do we accelerate that? And I want to know, has, has being Latina ever made you feel a little bit like an underdog in the environment? Like, has something ever been held back and how did you maybe overcome it? I think it, it just in general, sometimes it's hard being a Latina, being a woman, like technología, it's mainly a male driven, mm -hmm. you know, no hay muchas mujeres. Ahorita hay mucho like opportunities with mm -hmm. companies more seeking for diversity, sí. giving women the different opportunities to, to lead the mm -hmm. way and to lead the role. But I think we still face so many limitations. Mm -hmm. Y hablando entonces del, del futuro de, de tech, uh, specifically in your industry, a hot topic right now is AI. ¿Cómo miras a AI changing the e-discovery industry, say, in the next, like, five years? Sometimes, in some of these cases, you're working under some very tight deadlines. Mm. Um, you know, the court gives you a very tight deadline, or you, you have so much data and information that yo creo con toda la tecnología vas a tener muchos más avances en trabajar más efficiently más rápido. Sé que a veces una de las cosas, especialmente para los latinos que nos motivan, es de poder darle una mejor vida a nuestra familia, right? That's why we go, we look at these jobs, and I mean, I'm guilty of this too. When I was uh, 18 uh, in high school, me acuerdo haber metido a Google, and I Googled like highest paying salaries in Houston. What was behind that is like, well, I want to provide like for my family. Para los que están viendo, and they're like, oh, I've never heard of e-discovery. I think one of their questions is also going to be like, ganan bien en esta industria, no, and sí. can you do a good life? Uh, te ofrece muy buenas oportunidades mm -hmm. y ganas bien. Like, if you go to LinkedIn and you look for, like, um, e-discovery project managers, it's a six-figure job. Mm -hmm. They're very well compensated. And the thing is that they're also in a very high demand. Te vienen a buscar a ti. They're going to be looking out for you because of all that knowledge and that experience that you can bring to the table. Puedes trabajarlo en las compañías de abogado, law firms, legal corporations, and then with companies like Concilio, like mine, that is more of a consulting global provider uh, from end to end. So hay muchas, muchas oportunidades. With the government, too, you can do it with the government. And it's, I think as the world turns more data-driven, as it's, more companies yeah. start to depend you, on data to make decisions, va a seguir creciendo, and um, as companies merge together and new technology and people are trying to innovate, va a haber más de estos casos también que va a ser esta industria más importante. This one, I do kind of want you to maybe look to la, la gente que nos está viendo para, para los uh, jóvenes latinos que están allá or maybe even people in, currently in tech, but they want to pivot to something different and they heard today's conversation. They're like, eso me interesa. A mí siempre me ha fascinado eso. I wanted to be a lawyer in the past, but I, I, yeah. I didn't want to go to law school. But this is still a way to work in that department. ¿Qué consejo tienes para la gente que se quieren meter pues, en, a tu industria o quizás trabajar con una compañía como la que como trabajas? Que se informen del proceso, que miren qué les llama la atención, que aprenden de los sistemas que de, like the processing system like que aprende de las databases que relativity tienen 
montón de training online y puedes sus certificaciones no son muy caras there's a lot of great e-discovery podcasts and okay. different information on LinkedIn mm -hmm. like people they can follow including this episode yeah including this episode <laughs> más que nada que si tienen sí. información que hagan contactos there's like legal organizations locally that they can join there's like women's in e-discovery that they have different chapters okay. and there's different legal chapters that they can connect with people you know just so they can like make those interactions and just kind of see what part of the process they're interested in. Mm -hmm. Are they interested in doing something like me, like to where they're more managing sí. it? Are they interested in doing more like data analytics or like el, the processing in mm -hmm. the background? Pues muchísimas gracias por estar aquí con nosotros hoy. Me falta ir a Guatemala. No, muchísimas... tienes que ir a Guatemala. Mira, Guatemala <laughs> está, it's a two and a half hour flight from okay. Houston. Llegas y le dicen el país de la eterna primavera porque el oh. clima siempre está bien mm. bonito. Los volcanes, las montañas, and yeah. La, y más que nada la gente y la comida. So. Perfecto. Y luego creo que traías, uh, traías una, una bandera también de Guatemala. Mira, traías de... So, este, like, mi, mi niña se acaba de graduar de high school. Ok. And esta es mi chapina. Nació aquí, <laughs> pero llegó a Guatemala y le encanta. Like, le encanta. Entonces, para su graduación usó, usó oh, esto. Oh, like, like a stole for half. Because she's like, yo soy de... Y su papá es mexicano. Le digo, uh -huh. no te tienes uno de tres. So she's like, you know, so... Esta es la um, bandera de Guatemala sí, y este es el, el quetzal. Sí. El, tienen el, el, el pájaro nacional de Guatemala. Sí, es, el es muy bonito. Es yeah. muy bonito. Y esta es la, la libertad el 15 de septiembre, sí. del, al, el mm -hmm. día de la independencia. Sí, independencia. Y muchos bordados, como te digo, en Guatemala, like, la gente, like, they take pride in their work. Yeah. And they really do, like, hacen bordados a mano y... No, es un país lleno de colores, muy, muy, muy lindo. Like, sí. Tienen que ir a visitarlo. Definitely add it to your bucket list. Yeah. If you are in this field, in the e-discovery field, you want to learn more. She is an open book. She is full sí, of no. resources. Quiere ayudar. Por eso nos habló que quería estar con nosotros para hablar de su industria, para hablar de Guatemala, para hablar, a celebrar los chapines que están allí. So, arriba los chapines that are in tech. Gloria, muchísimas gracias por haber estado con nosotros, que nos enseñaste de, pues de Guatemala y de e-discovery. Because, e again, you guys came to learn with me, as I told you at the beginning of the episode. Um, y unas palabras finales para la gente que nos está viendo. Gracias, José. Me dio un gusto realmente a uh, platicar contigo, mm -hmm. introducirte a este uh, e-discovery field <laughs> que es tan grande y está tan lleno de oportunidades. Y para darle a nuestro, nuestros latinos la oportunidad de que aprendan sí. y también a la misma vez para saborear un poquito del, del sabor guatemalteco y mi cultura y de todo lo que hicimos, muchas gracias. Sí. And I have to call out, you had an outfit sí. change. I did. Este es mi huipil, este es mi huipil de Guatemala, es bordado a mano y siempre que lo, lo uso es un orgullo y pensar tantas las manos que trabajaron en eso, así que lo tenía, I had to show it off. So. <laughs> Amigos, thank you so much. Hit the subscribe button so you can keep seeing Tech 23 content. Nos vemos en la próxima bandera. Adiós. Muchas gracias.